What's up YouTube, Secret Koopa here. Today I'm going to talk about the Gearless Ratchet from Cobalt. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how it works and why it works, like the physics behind it. Uh, on the side you can see I have all the guts lined up. And you know, just to save time, but by the way, if you want to see how to take it apart, put it back together, uh, go check out the other video. I show in detail how I do that. Also underneath I have a patent publication of a similar design. This will just help me uh, show you guys how it works, hopefully. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and jump on in. I'm going to start by mm, describing to you the parts here on the table. So this is, this patent is for a box end ratchet. And the parts are shown, you know, you have the housing of horse right here. And then you have, well, first of all, this is missing a couple pieces from this. Since it's box end, it's only serviceable from one side, so we can go ahead and take away the clip and the dust cover because those are built into the handle. Next we have this uh, the gear mechanism the, with the roller bearings, that'd be this. The, uh, the top, the top uh, cover, which would, um, which would be this piece, and then finally the, uh, the, fi the last clip, the part that keeps everything together right there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just use those pieces. Mm, so I'm going to put this together right now. This will also help me... Uh, you know what? I'll hold that off. I'm going to show you guys something first. So this right here is a patent publication from 2014. October 2nd, 2014. Uh, this isn't the latest one, but it does have a lot of nice pictures in it and a, a clean description. You know, clean being pretty pretty exact. I'm going to go ahead and get out the latest one. This one is October 16th, 2016. So this is pretty fresh. Same thing, just a little newer. Um, so to get started, we have this uh, this picture right here. This is without the gear mechanism that is shown in this picture. You can see the gear right there. And, and I want to stop and talk about that. So what this is for is the gear mechanism. What this does is it, all it does is indicate the reloading action of a ratchet. You know that when you, let me find a little guy here, here we go, so when you're tightening a fastener, it doesn't make a single noise, it stays put, but when you reload, you have an audible click that tells you what the ratchet is doing, and for this ratchet, because it does have ball bearings, doesn't normally make that sound, you could, you could see that with this, it doesn't make a single sound. And they didn't like it. They said, hey, we want something we can hear. So they went ahead, uh, engineer, engineers came together and said, hey, we can help you out with that. They did that with this. This ring right here with teeth and a little needle to uh, indicate does just that. It adds absolutely no um, added benefit to it other than that it gives you an audible click. I personally don't like that because... It's like buying an electric car and seeing an exhaust pipe on it. Like, really? Come on. I like the clicking on my ratchets, like my other ratchets, but on a gearless ratchet? Come on, man. You, you don't need to do that. It's just, it's unnecessary. Anyways, they did it with this one, and I'm going to go ahead and start talking about this one in particular. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys a little closer about how it works. I'm going to put this on backwards just so I can just so I can show you guys how this works. Here. I'm going to see if I can get to focus first. Is it focus now? Okay, so you can see it uh, fits just like this, but as you get closer to the um, the tips on the hex, it will push the bearings out away, away from the center, in all five directions at the same time. 
so that's fine. But when we have it enclosed in the housing as so, let me just put this together real quick. Real quick, real quick, I mean, as soon as I can. <laughs> you know, this is seed, you know, um, once, once it's happy, it'll, uh, fall right in. So once it's, uh, sit, sits in place as close as possible, it's where it's supposed to be. And you can see, you can see a quick function, function check. So I can move it freely in one direction. But as soon as I move it in the opposite, almost literally as soon, there is a tad bit of play, but it's almost unnoticeable when you're uh, using it. It stops, then it's tracks. I'm going to show you guys why that is. So really all this is talking about right here is just the, um, uh, the function of this uh, box and ratchet in particular. Um... And also talking about the uh, the audible click, so we can see right here uh, the paw with the gear, the paw back in contact with the gear. This creates the audible click. The audible click signals the user that the wrench is turning in the unrestricted direction. So that gives you a really good, really good idea of what this one does. Coming back to the main pictures here. Um, figure two, we can see this exact of uh, this uh, maybe not the exact same thing, but close enough. You can see that this is the ball bearings are right here, held up against the housing by this drive mechanism, and you can see where the bolt would be placed inside. When you're moving in this direction, clockwise, the bearings are being pushed along, but when moved in the opposite direction. The housing squeezes the bearings against the housing right here. That keeps it from working in the uh, other direction. This is called a one-way ratchet and you flip reverse it. So you flip it over and you can start uh, reversing in the opposite direction. As to tighten and loosen. So for a little better example of this ratchet right here, I'm going to draw a quick picture. So we have the inside of the housing, we have, mm, let's say, well I better put, go ahead and put all six just to make it easier to, uh, to visualize, but I'm really just going to focus on, okay so I put five, anyway we're just going to focus on, focus on one in particular, and I choose this one. We're going to go ahead and focus on this one right here. So this ball bearing, you know, as bad of a drawing that is, we're going to imagine it tightly, tightly pressed up against the housing by this section of the drive. So you can kind of see how that is right here. See if I can get to focus for you. I kind of have to focus uh, manually all the time. So you can see how that is. The bearing is kind of peeking through. And you can see how the bearing is kind of peeking through right here. And it's being pressed up against by this uh, drive mechanism uh, up against the housing. So with that being said, you can move the ratchet freely in this direction because there's more space here the bearing is going to kind of back up against pretty much nothing and just roll freely but the moment you try to move it in this direction clockwise it will be uh, squished by this side right here and the wall so what we're, what are we exactly are we going to see here? I want to move up uh, much closer because we have a contact point here and a contact point here. So I'm going to draw another picture. This one's going to be a little bit flatter, just for the sake of uh, an analogy. This might be a little um, 
exaggerated. But of course the housing would be in between the space. So there will be a force being applied perfectly perpendicular. These are all natural, for, nor, uh, natural forces, normal forces. I mean, a normal is 90 degrees to the surface. So we have a force 90 degrees here, and another normal force 90 degrees in this direction. Equal and opposite. And of course the ball bearing is experiencing all of that force. And being pushed in this direction, and being pushed in the opposite. Now of course you'll see on the ball bearing, you know, you'll see it here, and you'll also see it here, but um, for the sake of the example, you, we're going to focus on these two. Because that is going to create a friction force keeping it from moving in this direction. That's why it stops when you want to go in that direction. You can see, I want to move it clockwise, but it's being pinched right here and up against the housing. I can't go forward, but I can go backwards as easily as you would expect ball bearings to do. With this being said, this is the most simple way I can explain it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to uh, further explain them to you, probably draw better pictures and uh, better examples as well. But this is really the guts and glory of how this ratchet works. Like I said, I like it. And, um, I'm, I'm using this one right now on my truck and other projects. And I just like that it's completely quiet. It's just... Mm, it's nice. It's nice not having a loud ratchet. Especially something like a... Like a 36 tooth ratchet. Because it's like... Click, click, click. Like sounds like a dinosaur walking around on tiptoes. Anyways. That's about as simple as I can make it. Let me go. Let me know what you guys think. And... If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, share it, or you could, you know, keep it all to yourself and, and uh, you know, not tell anybody. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.